What's, What's the, the scariest, scariest you've ever acted towards another human being, part three? Also, please keep supporting us by subscribing us. Account one. I don't really know how scary I was, but it is definitely a story that makes me feel like a badass. I was out at the bars and this drunk asshole knocks into me. He mumbled something and walks away. I didn't really care because he was drunk. Well, next thing I know, he is back and trying to apologize for bumping into me, which consisted of him grabbing my ass. My response was to grab his wrist with a death grip, force him backwards, and tell him, if you touch me again, I will break your fucking hand. Understand and repeat that until I get a head nod of acknowledgement. This all coming from my 5'2 self. TLDR drunk guy gropes me and I threaten to break his hand. No white guy. Account 2. On my way home from work one night, I'm a chef, it was 1.30 a.m., came to A, T intersection, with a stop sign on the road that shoots off, I had no stop sign. This high school girl was texting and ran the sign, came out right in front of me, I hit the horn and slammed on my brakes. She also slammed on her brakes. Both of us are stopped, me inches from her driver's side door. Her window was open, phone still in hand. I got out of my car, walked up to her car, she was shaking. I didn't say a word, stared at her for about 10 seconds, then quickly reached in and grabbed her phone from her hand. She flinched, thinking I was going to hit her. I smashed her phone on the ground, reached in again, and took the keys out of the ignition. Threw them as far as I could, still silent. I got back in my car, backed up a bit, and slowly drove around her while staring at her. She had tears in her eyes. She deserved it. Later I found out, she is a friend of a friend's daughter. Someone actually told me the story about how their friend's daughter was put in her place about two weeks after the incident. She snuck out and took her parents' car without permission. She had to call her parents and explain what happened that night as she couldn't find her keys. She was supposed to get that car for her birthday. This was three years ago. She still has no car, and her parents, who eventually were introduced to me after I admitted it was me, thanked me. I still love seeing her reaction when I rang the doorbell and she answered the door. She is still terrified of me. I'm six foot tall and have a mean beard. Not the friendliest looking fellow. I am proud. I have more brutal stories of the few bar fights I've been in, but this is so personal as I stop by and have a beer with her dad once in a while now that we know each other and I can still see the fear in her eyes every time. Account three. My wife was bitching at me. See, I got into some questionable stuff. She thought I was way over my head. She comes up to me in the bedroom and just goes off on me. I get right in her face and yell, You clearly don't know who you're talking to. So let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skylar. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot. And you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. Account four. Took my friend let's call her Mary, to a party a while back because she wanted to go but didn't really know very many people there. She starts talking to this guy, let's call him Rick, and they get really close, sharing a chair, talking really close to each other, etc. They might have made out at that party, I don't know. Anyway, they exchange numbers, and then I take her back to her house and crash on the couch. This guy is big, 6'4", a bodybuilder, long flowing hair, he could be a model. Explains why she was attracted to him, I'm not very big, 5'8", on a good day, stocky, etc. Turns out the guy is one of those people who relies on looks alone to get girls in bed with him. He's also one of those guys who gets really aggressive when you rebuke him. She tells me a day or two later that he has no personality, so I figure that's that. A week or so later, I'm at a bar with one of my high school friends, and I see him there with his friend, don't really know the guy, so I don't acknowledge his presence. I get a text from Mary saying, what the fuck, Rick sent me this text, and then follows it up with a screenshot of their conversation, basically, he said, look like your friend so, and so, hooks up with bar sluts. She responds with, what are you talking about? Then he proceeds to call her a dirty whore and a bitch, etc. My best friend and I go up to Frank and Faggot and call him out on it. He instantly folds like a napkin, saying he was sorry and wouldn't do it again. Half an hour later, I get another screenshot from Mary, seeing that he was back at his old game. Later that night, I send him a Facebook message saying that if he did it again, 
I'd stomp his dick in the dirt. He brags about it on Twitter and Facebook, saying he's a pussy, and that Mary is a dirty slut. Mary is super sweet, super nice, etc. She's like my little sister. It is on. So later the next week, I see him again at a bar while I'm with Mary. I told Mary not to approach him, and if Rick said anything to her, I would give him the aforementioned dick in the dirt treatment. I step out for a cigarette, and when I come back, Mary is crying. I instantly knew what was up. So I see Rick sitting on some bleachers. The bar was also a concert hall near the stage, chatting up some girls. I run up on him, grab the little shit by his hair, and hold his head down to the bleacher behind him. Then scream in his ear, If you so much as look at her funny, I will end you again. He folds like a napkin, slam his head into the bleacher, and walk off. Justice is served, and it was dished out by a man who is almost a foot shorter than that prick. Mary and her friends have a good time, and I look like the hero, yay me. Finally, the bar closes, and I'm outside with Mary and her friends. Mary's friend, let's call her Tina, is chatting with Frank and Fucker's friend. When Frank and Fucker rolls up to pick him up, I don't acknowledge his presence, because I already told him once he's in the passenger seat and starts talking shit on me from the car. I calmly put out my cigarette then reach for the door handle of the car. He locks it. So I reach through the back window and grab him by his nappy hair one more time. That time, I believe I pulled a chunk of it out. My initial plan was to pull him out of the car and stomp him, but that didn't work so well. He rolls up the window and cries like a bitch. No more than three minutes later, he pulls the same thing. With my left hand, I grab him by the collar of his shirt. With my right hand, I'm actively reaching in the car to unlock the door. At that point, the driver of the car speeds off, leaving their friend at the bar. I look at my hand. There's a large chunk of his t-shirt in my clenched fist. Haven't had trouble with him since. TLDR. Some huge dude starts saying harassing stuff to a girl who was basically my little sister. I told him if he didn't stop, I'd put his dick in the dirt. He didn't stop, so I put his dick in the dirt three times in the same night. Account 5. It was my 21st birthday. About halfway through the night, this guy shows up that I found fucking irritating beyond belief, but I could tolerate his presence. He was not only uninvited, but told not to come by me. When I see he shows up with some mutual friends, I think, Are you serious, fuck it? I'm not gonna disturb the peace? Everybody's having a good time? About an hour passes and I hear yelling outside. I look out the kitchen window and this fucking guy and a couple female friends of mine are yelling at each other. Naturally, I went outside to go find out what the hell is going on. I separated them and asked each of their stories and found out that my two female friends were pouring out a beer for our buddy that died of diabetic causes a few years back. Some of their beer, I guess, had splashed onto uninvited guy's shoes and he started having a shit fit. What the fuck, you got beer on my fucking shoes? Was his reaction. My friends explained what they were doing and he said, fuck dead friend's name and fuck diabetes. I told him he needed to get fuck out now. He starts saying he needs to find his glasses because he dropped them on the ground. So I wait about 30 seconds before I start screaming inches from this guy's face that he needs to fuck off before he gets fucking hurt. And that, he did not want to fuck me, etc., etc. In hindsight, it was extremely over, macho, but I'm a former Marine and that stuff slips out from time to time. And there's not much I can do about it. Anyway, he stands up straight looks me in the eye, smirks and says, fuck you skull full of bong hits. I grabbed him by the throat and slammed the back of his head into the side of my house a bunch of times. I was seeing red. I started punching as hard as I could into his gut and grabbed him by the head and threw him into the house, at which point six of my friends jumped him until he got carried out. Needless to say, the party went on and everybody had great night, except uninvited guy, TLDR. Guy shows up uninvited and told not to come to my birthday, talks shit about my dead friend, disrespects friends at party, I went berserk, dude had to be carried out, could have killed him. Edit. I am not proud of what I have done to this guy. I overreacted harder than I ever have in my life. Account 6. Back when I was in high school, there was this guy who I'll call Travis. Travis liked to act gay to piss people off. 
He used to always rub up against people, talk about anal all the time, and come to think of it, he probably is gay and was using it as a cover. Anyway, one day him and his friend were going around harassing people like usual, and they came up to me and started rubbing my chest. I told them to back off, and when they didn't, I stood up straight, looked him right in the eye and said with a serious tone, Please, leave me alone. They stopped. All was well. Not five minutes later, they decided they needed to. Get me. Travis, friend, came up behind, grabbed and held my arms while Travis rubbed his crotch on my leg and pretended to hump me and scream and moan loudly. This made me snap, and I wanted to kill this guy. Now I've never been in a fight in my life, and I have never been involved with any kind of boxing or form of exotic combat practice. I'm six foot, 70 kilogram skinny guy with glasses, and apparently I activated my hidden ninja mode. I slipped out of the arm bind with ease and lunged towards Travis, put an arm around his chest, wrapped my foot behind his legs, and pushed my shoulder into him, instantly knocking him on his ass. I fell with him because he wrapped his arms around me as he fell and my glasses went flying off. I was still on top, so I flung my arm back really far in an attempt to wind up a massive punch. I made a fist and threw all of my energy into this one punch aimed for his ugly face. There would have been at least 12 other people, friends of ours, all knew both of us, sitting around and watching with disbelief, all of them completely shocked at the scene that was unfolding in front of them. It was lucky that Travis, friend, didn't join in the shocked crowd because I don't know what I was capable of. I wanted blood. His friend had run over in time and grabbed my arms, holding me back once again and prevented me from ever throwing a punch. A teacher came running over screaming at us and I calmly got up, picked up my glasses, put them on and said to the teacher, It's fine. We're just playing. With a huge grin on my face, I think that moment secured my title as don't fuck with that nerd for the rest of my high school life. Account 7. Senior year in high school, I was taking a shower after football practice. I was the too cool kid. That was above the annoying HS scene because I was dating a college girl and that clearly made me superior. So I'm lathering up minding my own business when I see a junior cornering a freshman between a row of lockers and giving him some pretty brutal slaps to the freshman's bare skin like leaving big red handprints on the kid's back for no apparent reason. The freshman was pretty annoying most of the time, but I could see that he was starting to crack, and despite trying to play it off like a joke, it was obviously both painful and embarrassing. So anyway, I decide to get all tough about it because I have quite the mean streak of my own, and I figure if anyone needs some bullying, it's this bully, I say. That's enough, nothing, just more joking and harsh slaps, I say one more time, I'm not fucking kidding. Knock it off, he responds. What the fuck are you going to do about it? I'm still covered head to toe in soap bubbles, but I lose my shit and bolt straight for him. He sees I'm not kidding and runs straight out of the locker room. When I catch up to him, I bear tackle him in the hallway, still covered in soap. From either the fear of me kicking the shit out of him, the fact I was super soapy, or the sheer gayness of being naked tackled caused him to give up and he took his retribution slapped to the face like a champ. Account 8. Bar fight a few years ago. Not to toot my own horn, but my dad boxed and taught me and my older brother to box when we were younger, and boxed with my older bro five years older, until he moved out. So, I can hold my own in a fight. Even though I'm a small guy, around five eight foot, a friend of many people at the bar had died the day before. Everyone went to the bar to commiserate, I suppose. The guy who passed away died of a drug overdose. He had people who knew him and were friends. And then he had his other friends. A brawl broke out seemingly randomly between a small group of non-drug-related friends and drug friends. Bouncer got jumped by three, four guys and all hell broke loose. I beat the ever-living hell out of one of the guys that jumped the bouncer. Wife, then Jeff had to pull me off. She said I probably would have killed him. Liquor, high emotions, groups of people butting heads as a recipe for disaster. Haven't been back to that bar since. Took me a while to realize how savage I had become in that 30 second span. It's mostly just a blur. 
From what I have witnessed, though, once tempers and emotions get high, inhibitions are nearly gone, and we revert back to something nearly sub-human. Account 9. What's funny is that I was just telling this story to my boyfriend last night after keeping it a secret. So I was in the middle of having a verbal disagreement with my former best friend. She was black. This will make sense if you keep reading. In the middle of a parking lot, things got really bad, and she ended up bitch slapping me in the face, and at that point I was like, okay, you need to get the fuck out of my car right now. So out she goes, and proceeds to toss a bunch of my shit out of my car on her way out. Just my luck. Some really big black chick sees what happens and automatically takes her side and just starts screaming at me about how I need to get my ass beat. All the while she is strutting towards me and I just knew shit was about to get really ugly really quickly. I'd never been in a fight before, but I acted quick and pulled out a butcher's knife I had in the side compartment of my door. I worked in a really bad neighborhood and almost got kidnapped, raped twice, waved it out in plain fucking sight for her and all the other bystanders to see, and screamed at the top of my lungs, Do you want me to fuck with this? Don't test me! In sort of a screaming, hissy, almost basilisk-sounding-like voice, she and a few other people ran away in terror, and I got back into my car with my heart pounding and feeling quite crazy. Account 10. I was visiting home, and my father came up to my younger sister and told her to please do the dishes. He said it very politely, and that he had asked her to do it 15 minutes earlier, and she still hadn't done it. My sister got pissed. She started back talking, swearing at him, and in general telling him to fuck off. Nobody talks to my father like that. When he left the room, I told my sister not to speak to our father like that. She fucking exploded, screaming at me that I didn't know anything about her life, that I was a whore, a cunt, and bitch, etc. Then she started to come at me with her fists raised. Now my little sister is blonde, 16 years old, about 5'2 and 130 pounds, I'll be 21 in a month, have lived in the city for the past year, I'm 5'9 and about 150 pounds. To say this was an unfair advantage would be true. She comes at me and is about to swing. And when she starts to punch me, I literally grab her fist. It was like a movie moment. I paused let it sink into her that I had her clearly overpowered and smirk. She went ballistic. She started clawing at my face and pulling my hair, general girl, fighting techniques. I swept her legs out from under her and slammed her face into the ground. Her lip and nose were bleeding, and I sat on top of her, pinning her arms and legs down, and told her I wouldn't let her up until she had calmed down. I slapped her face whenever she called me a dirty name. Stupid whore, slap, fucking bitch, slap. She eventually calmed down, but it took a few more slaps until I released her. Account 11. I was sitting in the passenger seat of my buddy's car, drunk off my ass, and waiting to order a motherfucking McChicken. Well, here I am, hungry, drunk, and sort of sleepy. Three guys who I have never met open the passenger door and pull me out. Two guys were holding me against the car while the third guy punched me repeatedly in the face. It took about five punches to realize what the hell was happening. Soon as I realized what is happening and that I have blood literally everywhere, I started laughing maniacally. Think Walt White in the crawl space. The guy punching me asked what the hell was so funny. And I said, there are three of you little bitches and you pussies can't even break my nose. And I spit a mouthful of blood in his face. He backed up punched me in the face again, and they took off. I went running after the guy punching me. I grabbed the back of his neck, getting a hold of his necklace, choking him with it while I told him if I ever saw him again, I would disembowel him in front of his mother. I walked back to the car and yelled at my buddy for not helping me. He said it looked like I had it under control. The thing about this is that I scared myself. I'm 5,6 and totally reserved in my actions. And here I am getting the shit kicked out of me. And all I can think to do is laugh and spit blood in someone's face. I had to go to my desk job the next day looking like shit and with a still bloody nose. Account 12. I went away to school and got a totally crap roommate. She convinced everyone that I was clinically insane, had spent time in a mental hospital, had violent delusions, etc. Meanwhile, I was medicated for depression and panic attacks, and not violent at all. 
I was sick of meeting seemingly nice people, having them back away metaphorically and literally once they found out I was that crazy girl. One day I was in the elevator and two girls were talking about me. They were talking about me and how crazy I was. I had literally never seen either of these girls in my life. It made me so angry that these two girls could talk about me like garbage, but even more so that they could do that right in front of me because we'd never met. I decided right then and there that I would be the lunatic they wanted me to be. I walked over to the button panel and I casually dropped my student ID. When they both bent down to pick it up, I pressed all the floors on the elevator and stared straight ahead. By the time the first girl had picked up my ID, seen who I was, this maniacal villain, and tentatively tried to return my ID, I was reaching into my bag, probably for my notebook. I hadn't thought that far ahead. Luckily, these girls were so scared, I didn't have to think any more than that. The elevator went ding, and they went running leaving my ID on the floor and a grin on my psychotic face. Later that month, other people started talking to me, like I was a human being, and treating me like a classmate and not someone who was just released from death row. They slowly started to realize that I was just as crazy as everyone else, and that my roommate was kind of pathological. Eventually, it became a fun party game for me to scare the living fuck out of those few holdouts who really just wanted to believe in the killer girl in their dorm. Everyone, save the victims, really enjoyed my Shakespearean performances. Account 13. Good chance to get buried. But here it goes. One time, this buddy of mine calls me up out of the blue to tell me his kid was falling in with a lame crowd. Apparently, he was going through the whole goth phase. My friend decides it would be a good idea to try and join in to creep the kid out and do the whole I think it's cool too thing to snap the kid out of it. It wasn't going as well as he wanted and needed a dude used to creepy stuff to step in. The kid was meeting some of his little goth friends in a cemetery that night. Cliché. And I was told to meet them there. I hid behind a gravestone until I was introduced with a big two dude. Then I popped out. I stood there, naked with my bits tucked between my legs and gave the kids this thousand-foot stare, I mustered up a piercing falsetto and said something creepy in a sing-songy voice about cutting myself, then slowly dragged a razor across my chest. As the first few drops of my blood fell, the kids took off. Nothing really came of it. The kid cut that goth crap out pretty quick. My buddy played golf with the police chief in town so we didn't get in trouble for the corruption of minors bit good times. Account 14. I had an abusive boyfriend who was really awful to me, mentally and physically. One day he was sleeping, and I stood over him with a cast iron pan, honestly considering bashing his shitty stupid skull in. I moved out instead, but thinking back on it makes me feel sick. He beat the shit out of me, but I just couldn't do it. Account 15. I must have been barely 14 when at a theme park. On one of those crappy ghost cart rides at the very end, one of the employees jumps out with a scream mask on. Now I can't remember if I was scared or just sheerly disappointed with the ride, but I socked the dude right in the OL, scream hole, and he fell off the cart. Apart from the bleeding nose and the threatening to tell my parents I think he took it in good humor. <laughs>